If your best friend was being savagely beaten and skinned alive, you wouldn't stand by and just watch, would you? If your friend suffered from starvation, dehydration, and had been mutilated with a meat cleaver, you wouldn't stand by, would you? Would you? Dogs are our best friends. They're loyal, they protect us, and they love us. But in parts of China and Asia, dogs are not man's best friend. They're rounded up in trucks, they're taken to slaughterhouses where they are tortured and killed. Brutally, violently slaughtered. Because the more they're tortured, the better they taste. You wouldn't stand by, would you? Would you? The Rushton Dog Rescue Charity will not stand by and let their friends be killed. Until every cage is empty, they will never stop fighting. This is little, I don't know, little girl, I think. Yeah, little lady rescued from me truck. Oh, my days. They will not stop fighting. You wouldn't stand by, would you? Would you? The Rushton Dog Rescue Charity have made a commitment to helping the dogs in China. They believe that one day, with education and legislation, this trade could end. Until then, they're spreading awareness. Angel, Clover, Charlie, Daisy, Ting Tong, Dodo, Susie, BG. These are our friends. They are bringing the survivors home from darkness to light. Please, please donate to the Rushton Dog Rescue Charity. They cannot save these beautiful dogs without you. Please donate to the Rushton Dog Rescue. They cannot do this without you. So that was a campaign video done by Russian Dog Rescue, our guest today on the podcast to raise awareness on the horrors of the dog meat trade in China. So today we have the pleasure of speaking with the mother and daughter, daughter team, Cindy and Zoe McNeil, who together are the heart and soul of Russian Dog Rescue Charity, a UK registered nonprofit that rescues dogs from all over the world, including Bosnia, Greece, Ireland, Romania, Spain, United Kingdom, of course, where they're from. And of course, uh, recently, as of 2016, they started rescuing dogs from the dog meat trade in China. So Russian Dog Rescue provides all of the veterinary care needed and brings the dogs back to safety at their UK shelter to find them their forever homes. Cindy started the Russian Dog Rescue more than 13 years ago 
after her partner sadly passed away. Since then, she has been doing everything she can to rescue abandoned and abused dogs and is always on the lookout for dogs in need. So, uh, a very warm welcome to both of you, Cindy oh, and hi. Zoe. It's so, such a pleasure to have you on the show. And actually, I was Thank recommended. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, you were recommended to me by uh, Dr. Barbara Jennifer Gitlitz and wow. uh, Suki Su when I, I recorded the podcast on Animal Hope and Wellness China. And I know oh, that you work personally with Suki and uh, Dr. Yeah. Barbara in yeah, China. Yeah, they're good friends, Bart. So yeah, very good friends. Suki are good friends, and Barbara, we're all good friends, aren't we? So, yeah. yeah, so it's, uh, it's great that you accepted my invitation. I really appreciate it. Uh, so before we delve into the work that you are doing with Rushton and, you know, the history of the foundation, uh, I would just like to have a little bit of background history on our guests. So I always ask, you know, where were you born and raised? For example, we'll start with you, Cindy. I guess you were born and raised in the UK, but what part of the UK? Okay, so um, I've had quite a uh, colourful um background actually really? so i was born in london um i actually grew up in the care system in london mm. um up until my mum was very young when she had me my father was egyptian so my mum was from scotland and my dad's from from egypt never met my father but my my mum i did meet her a few times she passed away uh, was it last year yeah last year, last year. Mm. Uh, but i didn't really have a, a strong relationship with her at all um so I was in and out of the care system and children's homes up until I was eight. And when I was eight, I went to a foster home where they had lots of animals. Oh, so um, that was immediately where the love of animals started. I learned to ride. Um, so horses were a big thing for me and they had dogs. And um, I guess I just started to realise how dogs can give you that unconditional love. Whereas, you know, people let you down and things like that. So... For me, it was that was the start of it, really, um, and yeah, I, uh, so yeah, that's where I grew up. Um, wow. So your so, foster family was instrumental in developing this love uh, for animals. Yeah, and you grew up. I, I left there when I was fourteen, and I oh. sort of made my own way in the world from fourteen onwards. Oh my God! Okay, so yeah. you're a strong lady, <laughs> very yeah. strong lady. Oh, well, <laughs> and and you Zoe, obviously you were born in the UK. Uh, yeah. Your mother uh, raised you with um, your partner. Was was he the father of Zoe? Or? No, no. no. I I was estranged from Zoe's partner just after she was. Uh, Zoe's, Zoe's, Zoe's partner. Zoe's father just <laughs> after she was born. Um, so yeah, I brought Zoe up on my own, and I do have another daughter as well, Holly, who's um, Holly's twenty three, oh, and wow. she. Um, yeah, she is involved with the rescue, isn't she? But not on a huge, huge scale. But she, she does, she does, and she and she has a, a dog of her own from from the charity. And um, yeah, but Zoe works with me day in, day out. So, so I know that Rushton, you started it about thirteen years ago or so. Yeah, and that's at right. the beginning, uh, did I mean Zoe? I'm assuming uh, you were very young back then. Uh, yeah, I was. Yeah, so you weren't was, involved at that point. Oh, well, I was. So I was pretty involved. She was. I, um, I've been doing it since mum really started. So mm. when mum started rescuing dogs, I was at school. Okay. And I was finishing my final years at school, so kind of going through exams and things like that. But I wasn't very academic at school. And I was quite a hands-on kind of person. Right. And we had horses and stuff and dogs as we were growing up. And then mum started rescuing the dogs, and all I wanted to do was be out there with her doing it. I didn't want to be sat at school. I didn't want to be in the classroom. <laughs> so mum would actually pick me up on lunch breaks and stuff, like, I mean, come on, we've got to go and rescue wow. this animal. And That's so much more exciting than school. Come on. <laughs> yeah, so much more exciting. Um, and then I went to college, and I studied business and marketing. Oh, wow. And I don't know really why I went down that route. It was the only, well, to be honest, I think it was the only course I could really get on with the qualification I had. So um, I did that. And she then, spent most of her time covered yeah. in, in dog hair yeah. going into the into the college. Yeah, and she's like, oh, how much dog hair have I got on my uniform, Mum? I was like, don't worry about it. You're meant to look really it. clean and <laughs> stuff, oh my God. it wasn't really working out. And then I did my first year there, and then I can't, it all went to the... To the dogs, side, literally. Yeah, literally to the dogs. Yes. And then mum would pick me up from college, bring me, like, I need you, I need backup, and we need to go and do this. So <laughs> we just, yeah, and that was it. And I've just done it since I was about 15, 16. Wow. I'm 26 now, so it's all I've, 
all I've done, I've had jobs in between of working in cafes and bars and stuff just to earn some money, but this is what I've always done and this is what I'll always will do. It's just it's your passion. It's yeah, like, complete passion. Like, I don't have time for anything else really. This is this is it, isn't it? It's just yeah, that's it's about these guys. And it is there. absolutely so demanding, rescue work, so you kind of have to be all in, right? That's so, it. Yeah, it's not something it, it could be. There's no time for about. distraction. <laughs> No, no, the only thing we get distracted no. by is the dogs and horses, isn't it? That's it. No. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so, that, so obviously, you, you, it's contagious. Your love for animals clearly. Uh, it's your both daughters are obviously animal lovers, and you yes. grew up with pets. I am assuming in the home. Yeah, we did. Yeah, didn't we? we yeah. had a box across bulldog. Called yeah. DJ, who was one of our first oh, with dogs. Wow. Wasn't it? Yeah. And mum rescued um, a little kitten as well who um, had cat flu as a young kitten and she never really recovered and we called her Mulan and she was like partially blind, wasn't yeah. she? Oh, yeah. wow. So um, ever since we were younger, mum would like rescue like little, like almost wonky animals that no one else kind of That's wanted right. to take in. They came home from school one day and uh, they <laughs> yeah. said, what's going on? And there were these two ladies bringing all these cats in baskets into our little house. And they said, what's going on? And so I've moved out of my bedroom. Don't it's worry. now a cattery. And they said, what? And they said, well, this rescue home's shutting down and they've got nowhere with these bloody oh cats. So, of course, all these cats, and they were all upset. Yeah, mum turned her bedroom into, into a cattery. Cat all these Welsh cats. <laughs> Seriously. Like sleep. It was, and yeah. I was living downstairs on the sofa. I'm still living downstairs. <laughs> oh so my God. The, the dogs have more of a place in your home than you. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And yes. That, we're, the guests. Guests. Uh, we're guests. We're the guests. In oh, their my home. God. You're so cute. I love it. I mean, this reminds me of when Suki Su announced her family, uh, get the home ready because we're going to have 150 dogs coming tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was yeah. like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine the reaction. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the early years. Um, Cindy, at that point, uh, your partner passed away. Is, I guess it was an accident or was it an illness that he... Yes. Yeah, he had a lot of problems, and sadly, he he died from um, drug and alcohol abuse. Sadly, oh, that's very so he sad. battled with it for years, and it was just really sad. It just that, that was it. It sad. took him, and he was a massive, massive dog lover. Yes. And when he passed away, he left me his little dog Eyes. Her name was Eyes, oh. and she was a little Doberman cross, and she sadly died. It'd be four years ago now. Okay, um, and so. Yeah, it was, he kind of took me on a journey. I was kind of a bit lost myself um, when, when Tim and I met. Um, and he kind of took me on this journey and it was all very sort of surreal. And when he passed away, it was almost like through him passing away, I immediately, it was like he'd come up behind me with a cloak after he died and he said, it's okay, you're going to be fine. This is what you're going to be doing. Wow. And I was like, whoa, okay. And it just, it didn't, I didn't get up in the morning and think, oh, I'm going to go and rescue dogs. Right. It happened, it evolved. It yeah, was really natural. It was a very it? natural yeah. thing. Yeah. It, yeah, it, it, it was. was. It was very spooky. And, yeah, it was um, quite spiritual, really. It was it? very spiritual. And it just kind of happened. And I didn't even realise it had happened until I looked around and saw a house full of dogs. And what the chaos we were living in. Three, 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 and then you're like, oh, I guess I'm in rescue. Oh. Yeah, I think, I, like, well, I think I'm doing yeah, something I thought, here. What am I going to do? And it was... <laughs> So I, I then obviously thought, right, okay, this is my calling. So when he passed, so it was about turning. I'm a great believer in when something negative happens or something incredibly sad, that you must turn it round into something positive. Yes. Because yeah. you can't just sit there dwelling, going, oh, where is me? Look what's happened to me. Oh, I'm so sad, blah, blah, blah. Right. You've got to turn around and do something really positive with it and it just happened and I thought you know what he gave me what I've been searching for my whole life because I didn't know what I was searching for right. so he when he passed he gave me that this mm. gift and I was like oh my god and it might sound crazy to some people but that is oh, literally the way it was and yeah so I just thought right okay I'm gonna call it Rushton Dog Rescue and that was his last name Rushton oh. so Timothy Rushton oh. and Eyes his dog then became the sort of ambassador and as I say sadly she passed away uh, for about four years ago now okay. she had a tumor she's old so so it was almost like reliving it all over again actually but yeah but his so that, that's really spirit what happened. is very much behind the the foundation yes. absolutely oh, yeah. it was the inspiration and it's still very much there <laughs> yes 
So I, I'm assuming from what we talked about, I guess it was in 2007 that you started this foundation kind of officially, 13 years ago or so? Yeah, okay. yeah, it was. We, we did a register as a charity straight away. We sort of, because I didn't really realize it had happened. This is uh, the thing. I mean, don't forget, back then we had no Facebook. No, Facebook oh, if it was out there, even if it was out there, I social didn't know. media was really so, low. Wasn't it was it? low. There was so, like no, not much. I activity. had a phone, you yeah. know, with a cord and a little <laughs> dial thing. It was like, oh hello, it's a little. Mum's like rescuing dogs out the local paper oh. that are getting given away for free. Yeah, so, oh so. all the dogs in the paper, and people would say, oh, that's the girl who lives down so and so. And then a little old lady had come down. Oh, my neighbours died. It is a little dog. You know, so and it was just like, oh, okay. all these animals out there where to live. And then they just. They just started. They found us. They were really, coming in front of the it just child. Trickled. They were, yeah, they just turn up. Yeah, yeah. it was most yeah. bizarre. Um, and yeah, so it just happened. Um, um, I, I decided to go and open a, a charity shop ten years ago because I thought, well, how am I going to fund all this? You know, I, I was actually doing auxiliary nursing, oh. and. Um, I was doing that for a while, obviously, to keep the girls afloat and keep, you know, put food on the table and obviously the dogs. Right. And, uh, more so for the dogs. More so for the dogs. <laughs> yeah, they just they, they just grew up on. Who cares about Zoe and Holly, right? Yeah, yeah. Zoe and Holly. Yeah. Who is Zoe and Holly? All the kids. The yeah. dogs. The dogs need to eat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids, can you sit on the floor? The dogs are on the sofa. Yeah. Oh my so, god. Uh, uh, literally. Literally. So. so, yeah. so so you said yeah, so I, 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 I opened this charity shop and um, it was ever so funny. There was a, it used to be a pet shop and it was up the road and the guy Derek um, had previously given me a little beagle that somebody was, was getting rid of up there and, uh, at the pet shop and I took that dog on and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I, I said to him sort of many years before, you know, if this ever shuts, let me know. Oh no, you know, he'd been there a long time. Anyway, he, he was shutting. So um, someone beat me to it, but then I managed to get the shop after they, it didn't last long what they were doing. <coughs> yeah, when you want something, you want it, don't yes, you? So I was right. just like looking and thinking, I will get that shop. You were this determined. Is anyway, that, they, yeah. they failed at whatever they were doing, of flowers or something. And, uh, and then I got it and I just remember um, the girls were at school and, and going into this shop and someone came in with a, a bin bag of clothes and just, and they didn't even have a till. And I couldn't even pay the rent. So I, I actually was going out in the evening delivering takeaways to pay the rent for the shop because I didn't even, I'd never even thought about how I was going to pay the rent. I just oh. thought, oh, I want the shop. I and he said, well, shop, how are you going to pay it? I said, well, I'll go and get a job. So I just went and got another job. And then so she I, chucked me in the shop to run the shop at 16. I had no idea what I was doing. I said, I you can't go to school at all. But it just, yeah, you, you, no, you, I was just finishing. You were just finishing. You had to go in there. But we managed and people were helping and volunteering and it was a bit of a rocky start, but we did it. But and we it's still got it. It's still going and it's a beautiful shop. Wow. And um, proper charity shop. So it's good prices and people come in and a little community hub for people. Right. And, you know, we have a manager in there and it's, it, it brings in some funds, not not enough, because obviously nothing does, but it, yes. it brings in, it's a, it's a hub and it was a base mm. for for people to see what, you know, what oh, was going on. That's great. And where are you located? Where is that shop located? The shop is in Weymouth in Dorset. We're actually in Somerset. We're actually in a, in a rented farmhouse. We're not house. far from the shop, so we're about an hour's drive from Weymouth. Oh, yeah, we're in a, rent, yes. a rented farmhouse that we've been in for a, a number of years now, but right. we're actually just about to purchase our first ever rescue centre, no proper way. rescue centre yeah. from a from a big corporate organisation that's so closing down. Well. So, so we're going to wow. have proper panels and we're going to have proper, we've got a catering, we've got a reception. And that will, be, will that be in Somerset or will it be closer yes, to the shop? Yes, about an hour from here. Okay. No, it's got an hour, half an hour, isn't it, from here? Yeah, yeah about a half hour's drive from where wow. we are now, so. That's yes, amazing. And well, so, so finally. development. So like this year, you think it'll be? Uh, yeah, 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 hopefully by Easter. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. So moving on to, I mean, we we're, we have about an hour with you. So uh, I'm going to try to. We'll let you try you. the questions. We, you're going off on a tangent there. So that's some of the questions. Are we? Yeah. But, no, I'm not. You are. Am I? <laughs> I, I love the synergy between you two. That's great. But I can't uh, help it. I've got something to say. I want to say oh, it. Oh, we know that. We know oh, that. So, <laughs> uh, honestly, feel free to interrupt me anytime, but I'll just ask some questions. Uh, so at the beginning, obviously, you focus on local dog rescues. And yep. uh, when did you start working beyond the UK borders to include Eastern Europe and countries like Romania? I think uh, it was... Go on. 
it was England and then it was Ireland, wasn't it? It was always England for years and years yeah. and years. And then just we, England. We, we, yeah. We, yeah, just England. We used to rescue loads of the bull breeds, didn't we? And mm. all sorts of all sorts of dogs. Um, uh, and then we started to rescue some dogs in Ireland. And yeah, we, then we, we stopped that, didn't we? And then we rescued with Spanish dogs. I lived in Spain for a short time as well, and I set up a rescue there, rescuing the Spanish dogs. <laughs> I think um, one of the I dogs just... moved the camera. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Polly, like I can still see you. Things, so fine. Sorry. And then, um, yeah, we we took some. But never, never really dabbled with Romania a massive amount. I will say, we just only ever took. We took a few. Yeah, we've taken, I suppose, about thirty or so yeah. in the time from Romania. We've yeah. never really sort of. We never really sort of got into it. When I, I've always wanted to rescue dogs in the Chinese meat trade. This is something that I wanted to do right when I started the rescue. It wasn't something that I just found out about uh, okay. two years ago. This so, is something from when I was a, a child even. Remember seeing, I remember looking at, um, there was a picture in, I think it was like the Daily Telegraph, that massive paper or the Independent or something. I seen a picture of cats with all their, their mouths and, uh, in these trucks. And I was thinking, what's all that about? That? And then... When you're, when you're a kid at school, people make jokes, don't they? They say, oh, you know, your cat's gone missing. It's down the tape away. And I used to think, what's that about? Wow. And I was really interested in it because I didn't understand it. So, so as I started to get involved with the, with the dog rescue, I was, I, I was really interested in it. But there wasn't enough stuff out there about it because, as I say, social media was such a low thing. Yes. Wasn't, you know, it, it, I mean, how would I have even got into China then? <clears throat> You know, yeah, social media has opened so many doors for, for so absolutely. many different things, hasn't it? Well, so you found out about this a long time before any yeah. of us, you know? So Yeah, I was I was always really interested in it, which is just bizarre. But when but, did you first hear about, like, okay, so you saw a picture and you knew there was, like, some kind of, uh, of a trade in China, at least. I don't know if you knew about South Korea and all those other countries, but... No, I didn't. China was the one. It's that's right. I didn't know about Korea, no, not at all. And we've all heard the stories, okay, well, they eat dogs and cats in China. Mm -hmm. I heard it before, but you're like, there was not much, uh, like you said, mm -hmm. social media wasn't like as affluent as it is today. And, sure. Uh, so when did you first hear about the Yulin Dog Meat Festival? Um, the thing to do with the Yulin, I would say, was probably about five years ago no. that I started to sort of look at that. So about um, 20 Well, actually, I was still living in Spain then, so it was probably about six years ago. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, because it hasn't been around, I don't think, Yulin, the whole Yulin thing that long, has it? No, it's not like it started a officially in 2009. Yeah. Um, and it was so more to boost dog meat sales because in that part of the, of, uh, that's right. the Guangxi province and... I guess a lot of the, the people there, they make money from the trade, right? So That's right. it was waning dog meat sales, and I think it was a way to boost, you know, uh, exposure, get some tourists even. Yeah. To down. yeah. It's yeah. all very terrible. But, but I didn't realize that it was going on other than you, Lynn, but I didn't realize until I started digging around so much. It opened up such a... All of a sudden, well, then it's happening daily over there. It's not exactly. just yeah, once of the year thing. It was actually constant, constant, constant it's every a day, daily every occurrence. Day. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And as far as you know, because at this point, I think I, you know, you've how many trips have you done to China at this stage? I've only been a few times. Zoe's been more than me. I'm better off here, you know. I'm yes. better off here because every time I go there, I just rack up hundreds of dogs <laughs> and then get everybody. Which in is the great. Mess, which, which is great. great. But then, like, we've got to pay for it. You know, we've got to pay for yeah, it. It's so, oh, so, no, you can come. You can come. You can come. But then, to be fair, you I'm want to not take them off. Better. I, She's no better. I'm not very much better, though. Really. No. She says I'll go. I can yeah. imagine. I mean, seeing those I've been dogs. Quite a few times. Um, oh God, I can't remember. I can't think of the number. You, you did a truck interception with Suki, didn't you? Yes. My first time in 2017. In I think. Yeah, so it was the first time in 2017. And I went over and met Suki because I wanted to help with the aftercare of the dogs that they'd right. rescued off the slaughter trucks, just so I could get a bit of an idea of what I was kind of so getting So he's really interested in. in the whole medical side yeah, of things. Yeah, so I quite like, um, I don't like it. I'm not saying I like seeing the animals like that at all, but I like being the one there to try and help them yes. through the like the physical the side stage of, of rescue. Yeah. Right? That's um, when they so need you the most. Right? Exactly. That's yeah. what I think. And it's all well and good saving them off the trucks, but then they need that intense care after. So I heard about Suki and um she very kindly let me go out there and I went out there and um yeah we helped load of the dogs that she'd rescued and then we had a phone call about a truck that was moving. It was about an hour from us but um 
we had people on the ground that were watching it and stalking it and following the truck. And then me and Suki were, I remember we were at her sister's and we were just about to have um, a massage, like a massage yeah. because we've been working so hard. And she was like, we've got to have a massage. No more massage. Like, oh, no, it's fine. Don't worry. But then we got this call and she was like, no time for the massage. We've got to go. Let's I was go. like, stuff the massage. Let's get out there. <laughs> so then, yeah, we drove and we got our own truck and we intercepted the truck. And um, that was my first real insight to how the animals are transported to the slaughterhouses and like the, act, the brutality of it all, the, can, how can they you keep them on that, there. That experience, because for, for some of us at home, we have no clue. And I heard from other guests on the podcast that these dogs are so crammed together, yeah. so tightly in wire cages that often when they take them off the truck, limbs fall off. Yeah. I mean, this is it's the worst thing I've ever, ever seen. I mean, I think the one that it was, there was 400 dogs and I think it was 300 cats. Oh, so that is, God. you could think about the amount of animals on there. It was crazy. Um, and I remember when we pulled up to the truck, I just, I, to be I just stood there. Yeah. And I just looked in and shock. I was like, I was in complete shock because as much as you read about stuff and you look it up online, it's not the same as actually being there and having it right in front of you. And you can see all these dogs and they're just, they're crying or they're, they're just, you can see that they're dead. On and the brink of death. Yes. It was like the de width, like depth of like that. And there was just all these dogs and cats and they're, they're the sound of it is you said the smell didn't you the, the sound smell. of the smell yes. is the most haunting for me because you can never really get rid of those sounds in in That's your head yeah. and it's um yeah it's, it's it was incredibly emotional but when we actually pulled up to the truck there was a bag on the back of the truck and we weren't allowed to take the dog straight off the animal straight off the truck because lots of other people kind of came and it was crazy. I mean, I was the only English person there. I can't speak a word Chinese, so to be honest, I didn't have a clue what was being said. I know. That's... But all I wanted to do was just get the animals, so I was just like, just get the bloody animals off this right. hideous, atrocious vehicle. And um, there was this bag, and uh, Suki was like, there's a dog in there. And we were like, and I was like, what? She was like, let's get the dog. So we literally got up, we got the dog off the bag, oh, wow. and then I hid, I hid with her for hours in the side of the service station while everyone was fighting over these animals. Wow. And um, she's here now. She's actually here now, but she's oh. asleep. I don't know if. Well, I'm is gonna... she the one moving the camera? <laughs> yeah, no, that's Alfie. She's, oh. she's down here. Yeah, she's like a Chinese so dog. I actually kept her. So then we ended up. We she was the only get, survivor of the, the whole only, truck. Only survivor. She's here. Yeah. Oh my God, All those animals died. Survivor? Yeah, yeah. so that truck that we intercepted, they got taken by, um, it was, it's, it, obviously a lot of stuff is really corrupt over there, so they were taken by this animal team. Okay. Me and Super weren't allowed any more involvement in them because of a lot of politics. And they took the animals and they actually just abandoned them all in the warehouse and left them all to die. Mm. And me and Suki, we actually went back like the next day, well, Suki went back and I was stayed at the shelter and they wouldn't let her in to save the dogs again. Um, so thankfully I managed to get the dog in the bag wow. so she was the sole survivor of that whole truck uh, and then I called her uh, PG so okay so from what I've heard so far with my guests on the podcast they said that the only way they're going to be able to get those dogs off the truck and get them to uh, a rescue and then start rehabilitating them is that the either the dog meat uh, truck Trader or whatever the person that person that has a dog on the truck does not have the right permits uh, They don't have the right permits and they're you know, like it's kind of illegal. They're transporting yeah. them across borders and that's, yeah, that's illegal. what happens with this truck. Uh, so that's what happened with this truck But yeah, from what I what from what I gathered from it all when I was there I didn't really know what was happening there But after obviously me and Suki had a debrief and she explained everything what was actually happening So you've got to have the right licenses to be able to tra transport them from province to province right they are so big on infection control. <laughs> yeah. um, so they don't want to spread infection across um, China or etc. Moving these dogs, so you've got to have a license. That's not going so them. great, is it? Yes. No, <laughs> it's, not. It's, not, it's not working. Uh, no, no, definitely not working. Um, and then, but a lot of them don't bother getting the licenses because obviously a lot of the um, officials over there aren't really faced about what happens to them. Um, it's only when the activists get involved. Um, so yeah, this guy didn't have the he didn't have the licenses, so he had to surrender the animals. Okay. But unfortunately, it I all just, went wrong. It didn't all it? went 
yeah, all went wrong. Okay, so it could have been, you could have saved a lot more dogs, but somehow... We could have saved them all. Me and Suki had the truck there, and we were going to take them straight to the shelter, mm. and they were all going to be saved, but unfortunately they... Politics it, gets in politics the way, doesn't gets it? in the way, and it wasn't allowed, and the Egos. animals unfortunately suffered. Oh, but wow. thankfully, BG was the survivor of that one. So. And are you able to show him? I don't know, like, how far he is from the camera. Yeah. She, she's here. Oh, That's, you take oh it's, it's, what's her name? No, sorry, that's, um, I called her BG. BG. Bag dog. Yeah, so it's short for bag girl. Bag girl. <laughs> BG. Bag girl, oh my I'm gonna God. try and turn the camera. <laughs> oh, so that's her. Oh, is that that's the her bar? lifting her head. That's her lifting her head, that's BG. Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. You're saying you're beautiful, oh, darling. You're such a beautiful girl. You're the beautiful survivor, girl. Right? That's what BG that's stands for. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Oh my god, yeah. And that's Jupiter next to her. He's a little stray. He was in Shanghai. Oh, but they're right. Oh my god. Yeah. What's the little shy one called? This what? The one next to her, BG? Yeah. Jupiter. Jupiter. Oh, so that's cute. BG. Husband and wife. You've got mm -hmm. a very nice family. <laughs> yes. Uh, the kind of family I love. <laughs> Let me try. Oh. All right. All right. Oh, let's try and reposition you again. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, am I? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's it. Oh. Oh, no. What let's have, have I done? Is that any water? <laughs> no. no. Sorry. It's the, um, because I'll Sorry, it was my suggestion. <laughs> no, all right. I wanted you to see her. I just didn't want to move her physically because she was asleep. Oh, no. I can't. Oh, no. What's happened? Why does it keep falling? Put the chair back Is in it a, uh, a tablet? <laughs> Yes, yeah. yeah, we just, we, that's it. Wait, hang on. Two seconds. Me and my great suggestion. What about that? <laughs> is that okay? Is that yeah, okay? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah? Oh, we're actually, like yeah. we're missing a little bit of Zoe. <laughs> oh, you don't want to be missing me. <laughs> no, I don't want to miss you. <laughs> No, I, I think we're it? back. I think we're do you want back. me to do it? Is, it? is that better? I think that, that should be good. Yeah, that's better. Just huddle Just... up with your mom. <laughs> yeah, there's a few dogs in the way, though. So let's get you on my lap. Come on, folks. All me. right. So we got to see... Oops. Oh, where's she gone now? Where's the camera gone? Oh. I'll, I'll let <laughs> you try to sort that out. I, I just get a black screen. Can you see me? No. Yeah. Okay, I think it maybe something fell on the lens of the camera. No, there's nothing there. Do you want to give me that? Oh, no, I, I, I get, no. I'm getting an image. <laughs> so sorry about this. And right. it's, all no. it's all part of the game. <laughs> Hold on. Very high tech name, isn't it? Oh, yeah. All about the high tech. I, I, I definitely see the image, so that's oh. good. And and it turned it around. Around. No, it did, but it turned itself around. There you go. Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh. So sorry. Oh my god. It's hard to uh, to make it stand up. I guess eh? you have to put. Ah, that's better. Okay, okay, we're doesn't... back. We're back. Right can you, is that okay? Can you yeah. see us now? It's good. It's all good. Thank you so much for showing us BG. Uh, I say it's a beautiful girl, but they say they call her bad girl. But <laughs> all the good <laughs> it's human. Bad, so it's um, just her uh, name. So um, mm. obviously you touched upon the rescue process. I mean, uh, so I, my question to you was like, are you on the front lines intercepting trucks? It seems that in some instances you have been Zoe. And what about you, Cindy? When you've traveled to China, I guess, are you there working with local activists that have... Yeah. Yeah, we've recently, we've, we've set up with a, a group in Yan in um, China, so just outside Chengdu. Okay. And I, we found a, a shelter out there that has about 3,000 dogs in absolute poverty conditions, oh. like absolutely awful, like really bad. Really bad. Not mm. through their choice, to just through their lack of money and the lack of education, really. And wow. they do, the old lady there does a really good job, but she's, she, she, they, they don't know. They haven't got the education. They don't have the money. And it's That's a very, very poverty area. And it's sort of right up in the hills. And it's, 
it's really sad. So we sort of thought we would, well, I had the bright idea of sort of, um, well, I kind of got drawn to this place. It was bizarre, actually. So we've got quite a good relationship with her and we take a lot of dogs for her that are there that would never get yeah. anywhere else. Wow. We then um, have got a girl that works for us who's in Chengdu and um, she's got like a little, it's like a little warehouse, isn't it, Zoe? And um, it's been made into like, big, actually, it's quite it? big, yeah, yeah, but she's made it now with the money that we've been paying her. She's made it into um, proper like little kennels, like proper oh. white down clean and everything wow. and she's Chinese she doesn't speak a word of English okay you've, you've met her, haven't you yeah, but, she's lovely. yeah and um, <laughs> which makes we then take the dogs from there I think she is can't talk to her, yeah we take the dogs <laughs> from from Yan base and then we get a transporter to take them to our vet which is in Chengdu okay. which is about an hour away hour and a half um and then when they're they're all fit and well as well as well as they can be right. we then bring them to um Super New, who's the girl that has our our base there and then we then transport them sort of in, because we take quite a lot of dogs. We, we normally have around sort of between 70 and 100 at any one time. Wow. So we, we then, what we do is we then sort of um, fly 20 maybe to Beijing. And then we have another boarding facility that we rent a lady called Kiki there. We use her boarding. Oh, and okay. So the, the dogs, will, yeah, will go there. And then that's where they will stay and await Until for, they fly travel and where we're going to go so it's kind of a process but obviously at the moment with everything that's going on with the coronavirus right. we are all at a standstill there's no dogs moving anywhere but um, usually it works quite well We've normally, normably it works in. well but the yeah. coronavirus is uh, it's an unprecedented well, well unprecedented sure. last one was right. SARS but uh, yeah. you weren't working at dog rescue back when we had SARS right so no, no thankfully so, uh, so I, I guess at this point you've uh, built some relationships with uh, local yeah. shelters, people that take care of the dogs as yeah. best yeah. as they can. Yeah. And so you said Yang uh, province. Or... Yang. Yeah. Yang. Yeah. It's in Shan, Shan yeah. province. Yeah. yeah. And and it um, we're just kind of drawn to this place. I don't know what it is, but we, we kind of we kind of think as well. We well, like we when I go over there, I try to catch the strays because right. I try to catch the strays before they end up being caught either by the meat traders or right. you know being killed by the officials. It's all very well stopping trucks, but if you've got nowhere to put them and nothing have, better to move them onto, yeah. So the Chinese shelters obviously they stop the trucks and then they move them to the shelters, but then then they're, they they're at those shelters and that's it. Right. That isn't. There's not. They're not then being rescued because then they're just being saved from being killed and put into a shelter right. where they don't get fed properly. There's no process. Not, not all of them. No, yeah, not all, yeah, of course, but, you know, it's not, that shouldn't really be the end goal. The end goal of those dogs should be in a home. Right. Being loved. That's right. And, you know, being safe. So we kind of think that we try to do our best to take the dogs out of the shelters right. because then it gives, they can then get to that end goal because the dogs in the shelters need medical care yeah. massively yeah. like we've got dogs out of shelters that have got broken bones you know they're mm. absolutely emaciated they're really really sick and some they're of them disabled. are more sick than others and yeah exactly that, yeah that's uh, one of my questions is that i i've heard that uh, chinese vets don't believe in vaccination and so i don't know how you are you're not in agreement with that yeah it depends i think depends a lot what... of the chinese have different views on a lot of different stuff like any nation of people have different, yeah. views on different stuff um, i personally haven't come across that one no have you no i've not come across vets that don't um not against the vaccine vaccination. against the vaccination oh, okay. um, um, but obviously different provinces have different, different places have different views, views. on things yeah. right. depends i think as well now there's a lot more western influence going into certain provinces in china it's definitely having an impact on a lot of the vets yeah because they're seeing the way that we want our dogs kept was they're seeing the way that we want our dogs to have beds in the vet cages right. we don't want our dogs on wire bars no you know so dogs need to come out of like, the loo you it's know about education it is about, about, it's about education. education there's yeah. no point going to a country and going you know you shouldn't be doing this how dare you do this where yeah. are you kicking off because no, no. that's not going to get you anywhere Trace no. them and you don't get any respect going that's right together. you have to work you with have them. to treat people with respect yes. even if you don't fully agree with what they're doing at the end of the day it's their country it's, yeah so yes. you have to just show them you have to cooperate how with we yeah, yeah you know work with each other and if you work with each other and have respect and are polite to it each takes other years. you can get more done absolutely and more animals then can be saved in the long run and everyone you know you've got more chance of animals being looked after and you, that's how you build trust and rapport. that's it that's what i was going to say it's about very trust. important 
and and sticking with a with a situation and people that they trust you you know and and trust is a very big thing in china because sadly that obviously there's there's situations that you can't trust and things you know things happen but you kind of yeah, I mean, we, we have a good relationship with Yan Base now, don't we? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot that we'd love to change and, and stuff. We don't have the money to do that, but... I mean, you know, I have to have find out, money. though, I mean, without you, you don't speak... Either one of you speaks Mandarin, right? No. I mean, no. Very... <laughs> I've got a little translator. Translator. Oh, doesn't always translate the right stuff. Like, oh, okay, on the spot. Okay, so that's how we go out there on our own. I go out there on my own most of the time anyway. Yeah, yeah so we don't go with a group I or just anything like that. Do, we're very... Um, to be, I, we're quite independent people as well, mm. aren't we? So we're quite, and sometimes it's easier if you're on your own right. in yeah. a situation, you can work on your own instincts and you don't have yes. to really consider other people because you've got so much already to consider. Okay. It's the safety of the animal. So sometimes I do prefer kind of being on my own. Yeah. But um, Suki and Barbara are my my solid yeah, pair. Yeah, so no, it's good, to, I mean, it's good to have Suki <laughs> yeah. there because like she, she knows the, yeah, the locals and yeah, she, yeah, speaks she's the amazing, language. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's a yeah. great li little lady. I mean, I can't believe. Oh, she's, she's amazing. She's amazing. She's yeah, she's a good girl. She really, really is. Yeah. Amazing. She's heart of gold. She's completely yeah. so genuine and heart of I gold. And those dogs are her world. She adores them. They're well looked after. She yeah, she looks after them incredibly well. I've been to her place a lot of times. And so another great. pressing question for me and for many of us at home, we need to understand the costs. I mean, <laughs> the costs of rescuing these dogs of taking care of them, uh, giving them all the vet care they need. The, some of them need emergency surgery, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and from the food, the shelter, the, the transportation, yeah. on average, I know there's like discrepancies because some dogs are worse off than others, but mm -hmm. on average, what would you say is the cost per dog to bring them from China all the way to the UK for adoption? From start to finish. So yeah. if we were to, about 1,500 up to, up to 2,000. Well, you're looking between one to three, aren't you really? Oh yeah, yeah. you're looking at between one to three, but like if you, if forget that a dog, just imagine a dog is going, so it's going, it's going to the vets, I mean, you know, it's normally about five to six hundred pounds per dog by the time they come out the vets. Then they've got to go to, then we've got to fly our dogs to, oh, then they've got to go to our halfway house. We've got to pay food and everything else. So depending on how long they're there, that's kind so of difficult to sort of say, really. Then we've got to fly them to Beijing. Then they've got to be boarded there. Then, oh, you know, all, you're talking all your blood work, all your teeter tests, all your papers, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what? And the thing that always makes me laugh is the fact that the crate, to transport the dog yes. is more than the actual flight of the dog itself. I know. Work that out. Two hundred smackers for a crate. Oh my god! And, and then you can't even get the crate back over and then, to reuse yeah. it. Yeah, and then end up with like nine hundred crates in me in my shed. Oh, that's crazy. You know. <sighs> And but, so, but yeah, you're talking a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot. It depends. And then if a dog's on a drip and trying to fight to stemper and you're wanting to do your very best to try and get it to survive, you can have a dog trying to fight to stemper for from days and months. days, costing you a fortune, and then the end result is the poor dog dies. Oh, but yeah. you still have to have that bill paid. You still yeah. have to pay the bill. So it's, it's, it's a, a tough real, call. I'm sure it's sometimes you have call. to... You can't save them all, right? So no, of course not. And you do have to make the ethical decisions, and we yeah. have done that. Yeah, and it will be always be well. at the benefit of the dog. And if it's right for that dog, and you know, I've been over there and I've rescued dogs, and they they can't, you know, they're completely suffering. Their bodies are shutting down, and they're suffering. And you look at them, and you know that they're not really going to come back from this. No. And the kindest thing is to do is let them go yes. in your arms, give them a kiss, and tell, know, them, you love tell them. them that you love them, and so they know that there is. Uh, they they had that little bit of love before they go, but to us that's I'd rather do that than leave the dog. Absolutely. Suffer because the right thing is to is to do that. Humane. Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, more, it's more more the most humane thing you could do at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'm tearing up a little bit because uh, I can only imagine being there and seeing those dogs and you want to save them all, but you can't. So uh, so when we were saying about 1,000 1, to 3,000 pounds, is that where we're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so how do you go about, like, obviously, you need a tremendous amount of funds. I mean, I guess you're well known in your community. Uh, where do you get the support from for uh, fundraising? 
Yeah, well, we built our supporters up, obviously, because we've been going for such a long time. We've got a lot of supporters that have kind of been with us from the beginning. And They're seen very, us. Loyal. Yes. very loyal. Yeah, very, very loyal, very supporters. We'd be completely lost without our supporters. Our supporters are great. They yeah. are. And they are, know you. Are you know. Yeah. yeah, and we're, you know, we're friends and, yeah, and things like that. And they've seen our growth as a charity. And then when we kind of expanded into helping the Chinese dogs, mm. we had the support of our supporters. Already. Uh, already. We already had that. But yeah. then, obviously, then you gain different supporters going into a separate project, like helping the Chinese dogs. You then gain other supporters that want to support that actual uh, right. project. So, and then obviously we've got the charity shop, and we've got our fundraisers as well, haven't we? And yeah, uh, we've got like teams of fundraisers that do yeah, of fundraising right. in different parts of the country. Yeah. Um, and just generally donations. We've got, we've got a good team in, in Gloucestershire, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we've got, got Sky Julia Liz and Sky and Liz. They're brilliant. They set up like dog shows and stuff. And we've got um, Paula, a lady who does um, yeah. bits of fundraising for us, and many other people that do their bit. But yes. then everybody their does bit their bit. Yeah, helps us do our bit. So it's like a well, chain that's link right, that because... we all help each other. The story of social media is great as well. We, yeah, we, social we, 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 if, you know, we're in a situation at the moment. We're trying to get so many and bills paid, and you know, it's like, look, this is what we're doing, and we're always very transparent. We always show people exactly yeah. what it is we're doing. We don't really like to. We never really like. I to hate to ask it. Mum hates it. I, I hate it. Hate it. I, I never did it because when I started rescue. I didn't, that wasn't what it was about for me. You know, I, it was my choice to start a rescue. So yeah. therefore I had to go and earn the money to pay the bill. Yeah. If I had a vet bill mm. that needed paying, yeah. well, to go to work mm. and pay the bill. So oh, it's wow. taken a long Social time media to... wasn't there. I couldn't go to people. Oh, yeah. You were know. never thinking about you... that aspect. No, no, I never realized that that was even going to happen. So it took me, and I mean, I was, you I was needed sort of, a bit of encouragement. Yeah, it wasn't uh, something I was given her energy in the right direction. Always very sort of like, oh, I'm not asking people for money. It's my business. I so, I did this, but so it, you have to. Ask I have help. to pay for it. You have to. No one's forced and me and to do it. The is, a lot of people out there want to be able to help these yeah. causes, and they want to be the people out there doing it. But obviously, a lot of people can't with lifestyle and situations, etc. But. So they want to be able to do their bit by donating mm. yes. either money or food or exactly. bedding for dogs and everything helps. Like yeah. and we are great, so grateful for anything that we ever receive. Yeah, massively grateful. Massively, because it really does make we a difference. We don't take it for granted at all. It goes on to the dogs. And yeah, yes. we don't take any of it for granted. No. Never. Well, that's amazing. And I, I really encourage viewers at home, if you're going to, you know, like want to really actively help this cause i mean there's no better way than helping support an organization like rushton do the hard work that we cannot do you know or we're not okay. able to do uh so i i mean my heart is with you i i love what you're I, doing. I think something sorry i just wanted to say something i think something as well that um i would like to get across is the fact that when we rescue dogs no matter where they're from with china or wherever it is we don't look at a dog as can I give that find a home for that dog? Yeah, we do. It's more a that it dog needs, needs me. Yeah. If we can find a home for that dog, that's great. But we're still going to take it anyway. Yeah. Wow. So nice. we've got a lot of dogs that we have had for numbers of years that that have come along. Um, disabled dogs, dogs that have got um, incontinence issues, and are not you know and dogs, behavioural issues, behavioural issues. Yeah. Um, trauma different traumas yeah. that we've kept yeah, we because them. any any biters we keep them um i mean obviously... they're in their heart right so yeah, like... yeah they're, they're our responsibility, our responsibility. Yeah. yeah they're our it. responsibility that no one else is they're not for passing off to another rescue i can't no. own this dog can you have it you know they're ours we took some responsibility. our responsibility yeah. and when right. the dog comes into our charity the dog that is our dog for life we it might be adopted but they're our dogs. They're still our dogs. We say they're still our dogs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dogs. And, oh. and and so the dogs that we have here. So I spend a lot of time, all the time. I'm well, with here. all the dogs. Yeah. Mum yes. is a erosion of work. Like she is. Uh, uh, yeah. Amazing. Uh, I, You're a work horse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And Zoe, Zoe is 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 younger than me. So obviously. I do all the heavy lifting. Obviously, no, yeah. you can't do anymore. <laughs> old age so you compliment each other you're a perfect <laughs> pair okay? but no i think it's been more beneficial for zoe to be out there and seeing more things that are going on and everything she doesn't want to be sat in i like to get involved though i'm yeah. very she doesn't like, need to be I up getting out you're like on a mission like yeah i, I love it as well and one of us has got when there's the dog, yeah right? exactly but i love um that whole catching the strays and uh, just all of that kind of 
yeah. getting liberating animals from situations if they need to be, oh. and you know, and I I just get that. Um, it's a fire in your belly. It's not like an adrenaline. I love it. Of validation because I mean all of this is so much work you need to have that you know reward at the end that the dog is safe and he's fat that's it. That's the reward in itself. this is the yeah. reward this is the reward yeah, exactly. like, yeah dogs like Mary, it's just like that's the reward oh, wow. when she's so nervous of you to begin with and then like she comes yeah. up and kisses you yeah. on the face and you go yeah she knows she's safe that's oh that's reward. beautiful so I want to touch upon the adoption process uh, at Rushton so Obviously, I would encourage everyone at home to go to the Russian Dog Rescue website and take a look at the many dogs awaiting their forever home. All of the dogs' characteristics are detailed, and they have beautiful photos that will inspire you. I think these dogs are very special dogs, and they need a family that is ready to give them the extra time and care they need. The reward of finally giving these dogs a chance at a happy life is truly life-changing for both the adoptive family and the dog, of course. And yeah. so I'm going to take a bit of time in the podcast to, to sh uh, feature some of the dogs that are up for adoption right now. And um, I, I noticed when I first uh, did the questions for the podcast, it was a baby lion, but I think he's already been adopted. Is that possible? <laughs> no, he's know. here. No, no, he's no. here. He's still here. <laughs> we took him off in the end because there was just no, the right home just was not, just wasn't oh. coming for him. I, and my heart sank when he's I gorgeous. I, read, I took him myself, um, it was 2018. 2018, I went and helped in a monastery over in China, and um, 500 dogs were rescued out of a slaughterhouse, and he was oh, one man. of them that I gave aftercare to. And I took, um, I think it was five dogs I took out of the monastery when we left. The months of the garden of, of life, I believe. Eh? Uh, I think yeah, that's it. That yeah, yeah, that's what I was with Suki and Barbara. Wow. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we went there and died was one of those. We'd had his eye had been um, gouged. Pushed back in the, the back of his right head. Right back in oh. his head. And he just had welt marks all over his body. And he just had no trust at all. Like, he was terrified of everyone there. But every time I'd come into the room, he just started, like, screaming with excitement in his cage. And I said to Barbara, I can't leave him. I just oh, can't leave him. Terrible. She was like, so are you going to have to take him? I was like, Suki, I've got to take him. So we took him, and then I ended up accumulating a few others. Oh. <laughs> so he's, with, he's at your home right now? Yeah, he is. He's here. Oh, he's so uh, He's in the living room. He's asleep, actually. He's asleep in the living room. He's on the sofa. He's a chow chow, or like uh, one of those it's dogs. Tibetan. He's a Tibetan Spaniel. Tibetan Spaniel. Oh, Tibetan Spaniel. OK, yes, he's he's such Tibetan. a cutie. You get Tibetan Mastiffs, Tibetan Spaniels, and you Tibetan get Tibetan terrier. Ter Terriers. Oh, wow. So he's yeah, he's so, so cute. So we're going to choose some pictures with the characteristics. So anyone at home that's watching the podcast, I mean, I encourage you to go to the website. And if one of these cuties, like, tugs at your heartstring, then by all means, reach out to Rushton, and uh, you could make a big difference in that dog's life and in your own life. Yeah. because we don't update it. Um, wow. It's updated it's regularly. Sometimes the dogs oh come in God. and they don't make it to the website. Right. So we only have to then advertise them on social media and then they get adopted through that. So sometimes it's worthwhile someone sending us a really good application of what they were looking for if they wanted to adopt a, a dog. A nice and we may have a dog email. Yeah. here that isn't on the website that could still suit them. So wow. it's yeah, worth doing that. If, do you, lot, do you get a lot of messages on your Facebook page, or is it, or are people more going through the website to communicate with you? Um, we it's try and, all, isn't it? Yeah, we don't accept um, applications by the Facebook. We always say you must send a long, detailed email because we feel that people that need to put that time in. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. To, and to sit down and really think because when they're writing that email, yes. that makes them think and that, that makes them realize rather than just saying pressing buttons, yes, no, duh, 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 yeah. duh, duh, duh. 
was too easy. We're not so, shopping on Amazon. These here. dogs' lives have been very complicated, and you know you've got to you got to impress us to get on the podcast. Really, really, yeah, <laughs> we we're very, we are very fascinating. Very protective over them. <laughs> okay, so um, I guess so uh, that was one of my questions. So basically, someone would submit an application online, yes. and how do you? What are the steps that you have to take as an organization to ensure that these dogs are put into a safe, like loving home? Because I guess my concern would be these dogs have already been through hell and yeah. you want to make sure that they're in the right place, you know, with the right people, not someone that's going to adopt a dog because it's on a whim. And then yeah, oh, exactly. a few years later, let's return it to a shelter, you know? So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We, we, we make them to... work for it. Yeah, they have to show their worth. They have to, yeah, they have to really sort of, um, at the end of the day, so when they put in for the application, if, um, if they put in an application, we then say, okay, could you now send us a, a long detailed email? If that email is, is worthy and it's and it looks good, then I'll take the time to ring that person okay. um, and, and actually have a conversation with them on the phone. I've been doing this for years, so it doesn't yeah. take me long. I can kind of suss it out in the first tell. couple of seconds. You kind of get a bit of a vibe, but you kind, you, of, do. you kind of you ask a couple of questions, and if you get the right answers that we would particularly be looking for, right. it kind of gives you a bit more confidence. Well, some people say, where are you? We say, well, the dog's down here with us in Somerset. Oh, it's too far for me yeah. to come. And I'll say, well, the dog came from China. If you're not bothered <laughs> to come down to Somerset, <laughs> then you're That's not worthy. Right. 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 Oh, it's too yeah. far. An hour it's away. too far. I don't want to travel three hours. Oh, right, and obviously okay. we carry out um, thorough home checks as home well. Checks. And then we meet them as well. So even if we go through all that and then we meet the person. They have to come to us. We have well. to meet them. Oh, okay. And if we meet them even after doing all the checks and still don't, and don't feel that connection, we will just they go won't away have the dog. just say, I'm sorry, well, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, a long it's not process work. too. And it's about the dog as well. The dog gives us a bit of a vibe as well, don't mm. they? They give, let us know. But we're, we're quite blessed really, because we have a lot of our doctors are coming back to us yeah. from years ago. Yeah. So we've got a bit of a, it was, it, to be fair, it's not very often we get, we get more people coming back for second, third, fourth, five, six, seven, even eight, nine dogs, or people sort of dogs have passed away that we rehomed to them maybe ten years ago or something. Okay. So, so we already have that trust, mm -hmm. and we always prefer we love retired families for our dogs, yes. um, busy families, young families, and are sometimes not as Ideal. as good for the, for these dogs because they need much more settled. They've been through so much trauma. They need yeah. stability. They need they don't home is, them um, in, yes. with tiny children and things like that. The ch and if they are children, they have to be sort of sort of seven, eight up, don't they? And quite calm and very sensible know. children, but not little toddlers running around. We wouldn't be homing our dogs too. Uh, on that front, I, I have to insert a little personal note because I recently did my will, and um, I have two cats at home. And yeah. I said, what's going to happen to our cats if we both die? Let's say we both die. I'm like, oh, my God, what would happen? And so uh, together with the notary, we thought of um, our vet, our current vet. She's the owner of the hospital, and she's fantastic. So we said, okay, so we're going to trust her. We're going to give her a certain amount of money to find the right family for these cats. Or at that point, maybe yeah. there's a dog in our family. And they would the family would have to meet certain criteria so uh we said they'd have to consider animals to be equal members of the family yeah uh, obviously they would have to have a very similar lifestyle as us we're very quiet people we never have parties we don't put loud music we're respectful of the animal you know like especially cats that don't like loud noise so it would have to be exactly the perfect family and, you know, at that point, uh, I, I, I called my vet up and she said, OK, I'll do it for you because I know how much you love animals. So I can imagine that when you're entrusting someone that you don't know with a yeah. dog like this, you have to I take... cry all the time. I'm, I'm crying. useless at it now. I'm always I'm crying. Absolutely useless. Mum doesn't ever want to let them go. She's like, no. Uh, and I'm I like, don't think crying. this dog should go to her home. Look, we, look we, what she did. We and were trying to think of excuses. <laughs> yes, so I'm not sure you want to stay with us, don't you? But we know, we know that that is the end goal is to obviously yeah. put those dogs to go out into homes because obviously there's more. And we're always there for them for life. So if our dogs mm. go out, it is contracted. We and always say they look at you it's or they look at us. That That's it. They have to return yeah, They have two yeah. options. They're with that doctor or they're with us. There's no in between. There's no, no, oh, you know, they're going to go here. No, any funny business, I will just walk in and I will yes. just take our dogs back because it's in the contract, they are the priority. <laughs> yeah. The dogs are the number one thing that needs to be kept safe. Yeah, we have to keep them yeah, safe. Yeah, we've got to keep them safe. 
I guess uh, most of the adopted families you've found so far are in the UK, I imagine, but I, yeah. uh, you get but applications from working... other countries yeah, we too. Have, sorry, yeah, we have started working with um, some rescues in the US. Um, so we've got, there's a couple of rescue organizations out there um, that we work with now. So obviously those dogs can go to homes in the US as such. Um, we work with a lady called Yvette who is from Save a Sam. And, oh, can uh, you repeat that? Yvette? It's called Yvette, yes. And she is from an organization called Save a Sam. So it's a Samoid. Why not Save a Sam? Yeah, why mm -hmm. not Save a Sam? Mm -hmm. And it's for saving the Samoids and she saves them from all over the world. So she takes quite a few of our Samoids that we find in the meat trade. Mm -hmm. um, but the dogs we bring here, we hire mostly in the UK. Yeah, the dogs. We? Well, yeah, we try to sort. We try to sort of even it out now. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, we we tend to bring a lot of the dogs that probably won't be rehomed. Yeah, the ones that are we kind tend of to take the ones that issues. medical problems, the disabled. We try to take a few more of those from China. Those ones that we just feel, oh, I'm not sure if we. We don't know whether we could put that dog out there in public for whatever reason, whether it's medical or temperament. So we obviously think, right, well, they need to come to us because that's that's what it's about. And then we know that they'll be safe with us. Then. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, the other organisations need to take the dogs that they can home. So in, in order that they can keep taking them, if right. that makes sense. Which I suppose is a bit like for us, but at the end of the day, someone's got to take the ones that we are. A rest that no one. We are. We are a sanctuary, well. we are a sanctuary, a sanctuary as, well. as well. To be honest. So you work yeah. with our organizations in the States, any other countries that you have uh, some collaboration with? Or? No, we've worked with, a few, with uh, one in France, and, um, but we, we don't, not as a role, you know, oh, it's not okay. something that says they're like a big, yeah. big sort of hard, fast commitment or anything no. like that. And so, what about your shop? Uh, your shop is located where again? It's Weymouth. Weymouth in Dorset. In Dorset. Okay. And so do you uh, promote the adoptions in your shop or...? We do sometimes, yeah. Well, I can actually think of sending them over to the girls in shop. <laughs> just seems to be so much to do with the dogs. Just so much or, or just to announce that, you know, like an hour away, there's like beautiful dogs that are waiting for their forever home. Yeah, and we kind I, of, they know, don't they? People, yeah. we were quite, we're quite well known in the Weymouth Dorset area. Of course. Anyway, that's where we're originally from. Right. So a lot of people in Dorset, if they have dogs that they can't keep anymore, they do contact us quite yeah. a lot. We oh, do help okay. local dogs as well because that is yeah. our area. So we That's do your build. hometown. Yeah, and we you know, we have a commitment there as well to have yeah, dogs we do. there as well. Um, we so, can't just be seen to be taking the dogs from China. We have to but we have to help dogs we like to on our own doorstep everyone. as well. Mm -hmm. You know? We, we do try to help everyone as much as we can yeah. to be honest well it's beautiful work that you're doing and now i wanted to touch upon um something that kind of gave us all a little bit of a disappointment over the summer of 2019 uh and mm. we're talking about the move uh, that was well uh, okay defra secretary michael gove ordered the move to ban dog and cat meat in the uk over the summer of 2019 yeah. And uh, the reason why, while well, some dog groups persuaded Gove that it would send a powerful message to mm -hmm. Southeast Asian countries where the practice is still very rife, in an effort to match HR 6720, which is the Dog Cat Meat uh, Prohibition Act of 2018, that was uh, yeah. in federal law in the US um, in December right. 2018. And so, what that law is, it's really a, a statement that it's illegal to eat dogs and cats in the US of it. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. so I also uh, am working with a local Canadian who started a petition to ban dog and cat meat here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's been a bit of a struggle. Uh, obviously, he started the petition and we've gathered over like 100,000 signatures. Mm -hmm. I helped the promotion of the petition. He's helped it too. And um, I've approached Humane Canada. Uh, with a proposal so they could bring it uh, to a parliament uh, for vote or at least consideration. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's always a bit of a struggle because I guess they're like, is this a priority? Because in yeah, Canada, they don't see it as a problem, do they? Because it doesn't. They say it doesn't happen, so it's not exactly. a problem. So why do you ban something that's not a problem? But they don't understand that we need to be seen to be banning it so that 
because otherwise we're giving ammunition to the countries that are eating it. Exactly. We need to be saying we're banning it. Yes. So that we encourage they'll them. just come back and say it's not banned in your country, so we don't do it. Well, yeah, because better when every to. country has that ban. Exactly. Yes. The same level. And, and then you wants to be then you, one out. Then you've just got those odd ones out. We, that's exactly. what we need to. But we're getting that through to government. It's like. It's difficult. Difficult. And I guess it was. It was. It came to a block because. Um, Okay, so it was the Minister of Justice, actually. He put a uh, an end to that discussion because he, he, I guess the UK feared of being culturally insensitive to those Asian countries. But mm -hmm. really, HR 6720, the goal is not to say, to dictate to other countries what to do. It's just saying, this is our personal stance. In our country, it's illegal to eat dogs and mm -hmm. cats. And the whole idea came about because I know that uh, Animal Hope and Wellness legislation, mm -hmm. they started that legislation um, uh, facet of Animal Hope and Wellness uh, Foundation in 2018 because they came upon some roadblocks in their communication with those countries like China. They had asked them, can, can we ban this? You know, can dogs and cats mm -hmm. be removed from the category of food, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and the government said, well, is it illegal in your country? Uh, exactly how you said it, uh, Cindy. So uh, they said no. So I guess at that point, they they went ahead and they, they really worked hard. And we're so glad that they managed to pass that law in the US. And yeah. Um, yeah. we're working in other countries. But at this point, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, dog meat is illegal in the countries of Germany. Austria, Taiwan, in 2017, I think Taiwan uh, made it illegal, South Australia and Hong Kong. Any other countries that you're aware that it's... Not that I'm aware of, no, okay. but I, 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 yeah, I'm, no. There isn't, is there not what I, I know of. So. Not but, that I'm aware of. So not that many countries, well, we can add the US. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. The US, so we're it, about it's just such a shame that the UK wouldn't do it because we really did need to be setting that precedent, didn't we? Yes, to exactly. the, you know, because we are a nation of animal lovers and we needed to just have that on our so is it really off the table at this point? Or are they... I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure really, but I'm not overly sure. But I mean, if we, well, well, if UK we only ever see... enough and fight it enough, then, then we'll see answers, won't we? Yeah. We'll see, yeah. Uh, you know, you just got to fight a bit harder to get what you uh, and and so are there any yeah. petitions still uh, going around to try to get? Yeah, I think there is. Okay. There's, there's always there is, petitions. There's always petitions, there's always there's petitions, there's always there's petitions there's going around. It's getting the right petitions, there, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So there's always petitions going around. Um, Come on, William. You for these things, on, and baby. it's like anything with with the government, especially in the UK. You really do have to fight to make change. Yeah. So I'm assuming a certain amount of signatures would maybe change things and put a little yeah, bit more pressure. Yeah, I'm not sure how many it is. I'd have to have a look, look up at what. So we're, we're going to take a look and uh, we'll post whatever petition links we can <laughs> yeah, in the description to the video. Um, so at this point, I always have a big question for our guests, and uh, we're going to wrap things up a little bit because I know you, you're very busy and you have a lot of <laughs> friends waiting for you. Uh, so the big question is, in your opinion, will we ever see the end of the dog cat meat trade in Asia? Uh, and if so, what is it going to take to get us there, in your okay. opinion? Do you want to answer your Yeah, I do. I, 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 I don't think it's ever going to happen in my lifetime. No. Um, I think because we're dealing with such corrupt countries, sadly, I think even if it was, even, even if it was banned, it would not be enforced. Would yeah, exactly. Underground, yeah. and it would be happening underground. Yes, okay, you wouldn't see as much media attention about it on social media it's but it would be because then you don't really know then what's going on no you don't that's even worse i think um <sighs> it sounds defeatist when you say it doesn't it people I say just... it to us all the time don't they is this yeah. ever going to end and i say probably not i'd like to say it would end in my lifetime but it may not i mean it's so massive. massive it's massive, massive. It's, it's massive. massive. It's, it's You're talking a of a country, the population of people over there is yeah. ginormous. The, the 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 space over there is massive, and like you know, 
And the thing is, so it's not even just and... about the dog meat trade. Let me just say something. It's not re It's not just about the dog meat trade. If we're just going to talk about China as a, as a one country right. at the moment, the oh, abuse in general and the way that animals are treated is horrific. Regardless of meat, yes. forget the meat for a minute, is horrendous. Yeah, exactly. Dogs in the road hitting them for no reason exactly. just because it's funny. There's you no know. respect. There's... Dogs in the market, poodles ch put into tiny little jars and so that little dogs are, you know, abused and the way they hold them and if it moves, they'll eat it. And, it, you know, it's animals in general are given just such a terribly, terribly weird We've had deal. dogs that have just had, like, paws hacked off just for the fun of it on the yeah. street. Yeah. Like, a, t a dog's tail, we just rescued one and her tail would have been completely severed oh because someone just wanted to do it. And Mary, they filmed it and put it... Much little Mary, Mary was, Not a good way. Uh, well, no, no abuse has been a good way, but what I'm no, trying to say is the worst you can imagine. Exactly. Somebody. And okay. I guess somebody, uh, one of my guests had mentioned that obviously China, if we're going to talk about China, they have human rights issues. They have a lot of problems. And, yes. and, and I don't know if uh, uh, you'll tell me your opinion, but I don't mm. know how rampant dog and cat meat consumption is in China or if it's more just in remote areas. Uh, but a lot of people, that's how they earn their living. They were raised from a family that was doing this. And they yeah. from early on, they, they have a disconnect to animals, like animal yeah. pain. Yeah. They don't, like we yeah. hear a they dog cry. They feel pain. It's a it's a funny one and they it's kind like, of get enjoyment out of exactly watching them suffer and it is a it's just a very big lack of compassion exactly. it's a lack of compassion and I, like you said you know we're talking of a country that's got very minimal human rights animals they're bottom of the pile yes. they are way bottom of the list like they are right. not a priority in these the orphanages size. over in china yeah, we were, the child orphanages we, we were looking at the children at all i know the it, they have so many issues and a lot of them in in poor regions i mean this is yeah. they're, and it's really it's sad it's really sad it's, it's so sad education. it's beautiful but they're not all like beautiful that they're not place. like that there's like, some of them are really really over there. yeah and some of them are really really good and some of them do have a lot of compassion yeah, of and course. there's a lot of animal activists out there doing some really fantastic work yeah and, they do have that love and compassion for the animals. But then again, but they're a lot fighting of and losing battle. They're fighting. Mm. They're fighting all the time against this big monster towards them. And, exactly. you know. And especially in China, it's so sad. activists just, are not uh, like we take our freedom of speech uh, for granted yeah, in these countries. Yeah. But over there, they're risking their lives, you know, honestly. Yeah, um, and if you have a family with children, you, your priority is going to be with your family and children. You can't yeah. risk yourself like being thrown in jail or worse by fighting for animal rights. So it's a different set of priorities. And I guess um, the previous guest had mentioned that it seems they take out their frustration on animals because they're so frustrated in their lives. They're so getting yeah. the raw end of the deal that, yeah. you know, they have no more compassion when it comes to the animal. It's a very and, controlled country, isn't it? It's just controlled. It's yes. just, yeah. And then, uh, uh, we can talk about South Korea, where I interviewed uh, Nami Kim of Safe Korean Dogs, and she mm -hmm. is, I mean, it's a, it's a totally different uh, political system over there, and so it's more democratic, and so people do have a right to speak up and say, well, we're against this. Uh, so maybe they're a little bit more ready for a change, but at the same time, South Korea is home to a two, apparently $2 billion a year industry for dog meat farming. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a big, big industry. And when there's money, well, it's very hard for the government to step in and to say, well, okay, we're going to ban this because it's, it's like me asking our government to ban the meat yeah. industry. It's got mm -hmm. such economic ties that it's going to be very difficult. But according to Nami, she feels it's a very generational issue, and a lot of people have mentioned mm -hmm. that. And so she thinks, give it 20 years, I think they'll see massive change. Because the younger generation is much more pro-animal rights, and they do have much more influence from Western you know, culture. Yeah. And understanding that a dog is a sentient being, it's a companion animal. I mean, dogs were, uh, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people, dogs were never intended to be food, I, as sad as it is, because I'm vegan, so I don't eat cow and yeah. pigs, but the truth of the matter is, the, the, the pig and the cow and the chicken were all bred to be food, like over yeah. thousands of yeah. years. 
Yeah. Uh, whereas a dog was bred to be a companion for hunting, yeah. for herding, for all that. And so um, I guess it's mentalities that are going to have to progress. Uh, certainly some countries are more ready for that change than others. Uh, we see Thailand. Thailand has made such strides and really yeah. it's almost eradicated the dog meat in that country. Yeah, but, yeah. But like you mentioned before, it's made room for underground uh, smuggling yeah. into Vietnam. And so there's still issues, but they're always going to be issues. When you ban something, there's going to be an underground uh, black market for it. So. Yeah. All right, so maybe not in our lifetime, but we're going to keep on fighting and hopefully... It's all you can do. It's all you can do. It's just all you can do. Keep fighting, keep educating and keep saving. Keep trying, keep trying. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I guess for me, why I'm so adamant about trying to put an end to this particular industry as opposed to... I mean, I want to put an end to all uh, animal exploitation. Yeah. Uh, but it's more realistic in, in many ways because dogs and cats are not consumed in most of the world. It's a certain part of the world. And uh, so you would think it's the most obvious category of animals to be removed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I think we have some hope and certainly... Yeah. I'd like to believe that we do. Yes. I, yeah. I, we got to keep the hope alive or else yeah. everything we're That's doing it. Yeah, is very true. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it's very easy to kind of lose it, especially when you're in this game because you just see the, the cruelty. It's emotionally like, draining. It's, it's, like, draining. it's like it's like taking water to the sea. It just, yeah. You're just going round. And you round, save one dog and then go round. Round. you look back around the corner in and the there's loop. another one. And, oh my God, there's another one. And it's just a constant cycle of emotions and heartache. It is. And and mm. It is. But you wouldn't yeah. have it any other way. Your hearts no. and souls are invested. And... Oh, there it is, isn't it now? That's we, it we've now, gone to the bad. dogs. Where's it now, bad, isn't it? Well, it's, that's all, right. it's all game over. Uh, so <laughs> lastly, before I let you go, because I know we're running out of time, I wanted to speak a little bit, because especially Zoe, you said that you saw it firsthand, and I imagine, Cindy, too, you've been to China. Um, mm. The psychological impact of seeing that cruelty up front and close and personal um, has it left some trauma in you? I mean, are you having some kind of symptoms like PTSD that is very common uh, for people that witness uh, such traumatic events uh, take place? Um, yeah, I like, I, like to, I like to say, no, I'm fine, I'm strong, because that's the kind of the, the perception of myself I like to kind of give over because you have to be strong to... Yeah, to forge your head. It. Yeah, um, and I have to go into it with a strong mindset However, yeah, I, I have struggled, you know, um, I've struggled sleeping. Yes. Feeling highly, highly stressed. Yes. Quite jumpy, actually. When I first, when I came back last year, I, I um, from my trip in June, I came back and I was just so, I was, I was just, I was stressed in you, my head and are. I was so emotional. Drained. And I would just cry at things, yeah, and I was drained and I was, I was quite jumpy. I just felt myself kind of jumping at, like, the dogs barking and things. And I'm like, my God, why am I... Why am I jumping yeah. at that? Like, oh, please just stop. It's fine. Like, you're not there. You're here. Like, you're fine. Like, just everything's okay. And it does take an effect on you. Yeah. And I am. I am only 26. Like, so I am. Yes, you know, you're very young. Quite young, really. So I. But it's it's character building. That's that's what that's I tell us. Sure. It is. You have got to be strong being in this game. And it's not like it's the first thing that I've gone into. You know, I've kind of had my. Um, strength kind of built up over the years of going into different situations right. so that, but this is like nothing I've you ever try to brace yourself for what's yeah, yeah. and but you're I'm only human at the end of the day yeah. so you know it is going to take an effect on me but then I think well what effect does it take on the dogs yeah mm. so you know the that, effect that, that it takes on them the and they come out of it the other side and they're strong and you don't I see know. them crying in the corner every five minutes going I can't believe what I've just been through and you know they just get on with it they're like oh my god yeah you know I've got grass and I've got the fields, I can run, I'm free, I've got these people, and, and they, so that's, they see the that's, good side. That's what keeps you so, going, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah and so my, have you, do you develop any other tools to help you cope with this stress and anxiety, like uh, meditation, yoga, I don't know. Like, I have got time. I haven't really got time for that, no. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I do suffer quite badly with my anxiety. Like, I, I kind we of... We both do, don't yeah, we? Yeah, but I go into these situations, and I, like, struggle with my breathing and stuff, But so I just have to, like, shut my eyes. Breathe. Do a couple of breaths, yes. count to ten. Right, so you're fine. Get on with it. Wow. Just do it. It's got to be done. Um, 
So I just, but to be honest, my dogs are my therapy. Like when I go home yes. at night and I get my dogs in my cottage and we're on that sofa and we're under my blanket and we're, That's the best. They, they're my therapy. Sure. They're the things I feel more anxious when I'm away from them yes. than when I'm with them because oh. they're my, they're my safety net. Yes. Like they I just make me feel safe. completely relate to that. Although I've never seen it firsthand and I don't think I could handle it as well as you. Um, I am pretty sure. Um, I have seen some images, and just seeing the images caused yeah. me sleepless nights. So I can only imagine yeah. what you guys go through. Well, it's just um, I think when you've just suffered so much, um, like I've witnessed so much death. Yeah. You know, I've had a lot of dogs death, die in my it? arms. Like I've had hundreds, literally, over the years of going and over the different years. It's like I've over those years, I've had hundreds of dogs die in my arms, and you watch them take their last breaths, and you just go. It is just, and they stick with you. And I remember all of them. I yes. remember all of them in my head. I know I can remember every single one of them in my head. Right. And then I go back over my old photos and videos of each of my, like the trips and stuff that we've done. And you do, it does take a psychological effect on you, but you think, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Like, I can't believe I've just kind of, I witnessed all that yeah. stuff or I can't believe that dog and I was there. And But it is reality. But exactly. As I say, they can get through it. So yeah. and you just keep your you. focus <laughs> on the next dog that you can save. Exactly. And, you know. Yeah, and the focus of when you rescued that dog, getting it out of there. Yeah, look at then you here, come back. You come time. back here, and then you see yeah. a lot of the dogs here that we've worked with that have been in those situations, and you see, don't yeah. you, how we turn them round and yes. they've well, they turned themselves round. We haven't done anything. Yeah. Yeah. They've done it themselves. Yeah, you they've know, done people don't. Oh, you know, we, I've turned this dog. Around. No, no, no. no These they've dogs, done it. They do it. Oh, we yeah. give them the tools and they build it. <laughs> yeah. The ability of these dogs to bounce back is amazing. Yeah, like, amazing. It, it's they just put us humans to shame. They do put us humans to shame. They really do. Yeah, yeah. absolute shame to us because these, yeah, the dogs are just, they're, they're amazing. They are phenomenal creatures. They are. They're just the strength of lions. Of Absolutely. Being. Well, I, um, before uh, we end the podcast, I always ask um, what would, uh, any guest that I should have on the podcast and why. So any suggestions for me, for future guests? I'm trying to think who you've done. So you've done Suki. So I would say Suki and Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Suki and Barbara. Barbara. Oh, what about, um, what about Yvette in the US? Uh, she's yeah, yeah, try you know what? Yeah, I think, a lovely um, lady. Yeah, like, Yvette, Yvette from Why Not Say for Sam. Oh, yeah, okay. she does she some, let me just tell you that lady doesn't just take the samoids she will take other breeds as well when yeah, they're so she's, yeah, disguised samoids yeah molly's turning up as uh, samoids in disguise yeah oh and we've God. also just started working with another lady as well called um sonia from um elite greyhound rescue oh, yeah. and she's florida. in florida oh, and I've heard um, about them yeah we've Started you taking could try, you could ask her. Lovely, yeah. lovely lady. Um, we've, yeah, we've just formed but a really she good takes connection. Uh, Greyhounds in disguise too. Yeah, Greyhounds in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but because they're uh, they're retired from racing, I guess. Uh, the yeah, so a lot of race. Yes. Yeah, there's uh, been the race, illegal racing over there and stuff, and a lot of them get imported from different countries over, over like a lot of them get imported from Ireland over here into the China yes. for the racing. Then they end up in the meat trade. Mm. when they're finished with them or they sell them for crazy money don't they for breeding yeah. and it's just yeah it's a crazy cycle there's so much um so there's much so to much do, to it so much to do for animals still and so we thank you so much for what you do cindy and zoe it's amazing and we want well, to encourage you and Bye. so uh, if anyone wants to see your dogs, we're going to post the links to your website. Any other places that we should send them to? Facebook page? Um, and... put them on, we've got our Facebook page and we've got our Instagram page as well. So you can head them towards the, uh, the Instagram when, page. Oh, so. Instagram, yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm not on it yet. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. We've got the Instagram and it's quite good, the Instagram. I think quite yes. a lot of people use it now. So it's quite a good little platform to have as well. And the latest news has it that you're uh, waiting 44 dogs from China. I saw on your website. Well, we've got a lot of dogs over there in China, and I just asked the guy that does our website just to put some of the dogs up that are yes, I saw some of in their sort of process. But no, we are, no. as I say, everything in China is just really yeah. difficult right now. On, so on, uh, it's going to be on lockdown. Yeah. Flights have been cancelled yeah. and stuff. A lot of people, everyone's trying to get out of China. I'm trying to get into China. <laughs> I just yeah. want to get over there so I can get the strays off the you're, streets. You're not, like, yeah. I want to get over there. I feel useless sat here. Everybody's being needless now. This is where they need us. 
You're not yeah. at all phased by this coronavirus or like No, you know. I mean not really. Not person <laughs> I just wanna have the dogs, that's all I care about. Right? I'm like stressed about it, isn't it? It's oh, horrible just yeah. knowing that they're out there and there's yeah. like hardly anyone out there because everyone's on lockdown. Oh, so it's like wow. a real anxious time, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it is. Well, hopefully just it'll useless. clear because I, last time, last word has it that they came up with a vaccine. So hopefully, uh, oh really? Uh, we're under day. control soon, and you can go, uh, Zoe. You can go back to China and save some more yeah, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get me out there. My bag packed. <laughs> You're ready to go. <laughs> we're ready. She's ready. We're ready. We're ready so it's okay. Uh, what's his cutie's name? And Zoe's own. Yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Fox. 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 Oh my God, he's Fox. so cute. Oh, he's he's very, very, very sensitive. In your arms. And uh, what about your little baby in your arms, uh, Cindy? What's his name? Oh, this is <clears throat> this is Kerryanna, aka Badger, <laughs> and she's from Ireland. Oh, wow. And she's she was a feral from Ireland, and I oh. rescued her about. Oh, nine, ten years ago. Ten years ago, I reckon. Oh, she's your pet. And, uh, <laughs> wild as a banshee she was. So she's an old lady now. Oh, my but God. But they thought she was a badger, so she did a badger. But I called her Kerryanna because she's from County Kerry. Oh, that's in so Ireland. cute. And she's, she's a bit of an old girl. She, oh, she's the best. She's she the best. bites everyone. Yeah, bites everyone. Wow. Runs at everyone. She's the best dog. <laughs> a real dog. <laughs> a real yeah. dog. Oh, well, we're going to wish you a nice day, like a nice afternoon. I think it's around 4 o'clock over there. So nice yeah, day. Yeah, feed in time. Feed in time now. Yes. Okay, so you go and have some tea because apparently I witnessed a dog uh, slipping, uh, slurping her tea, uh, Cindy's tea earlier. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very, yeah. <laughs> very English. Very English, yeah. Thank you very much for your time. You've been so generous, and we'll continue to support you and look out for uh, your next uh, big adventure. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye